heavenly and divine about us. Can you hear me? I want every man in this room to stand up, please. Every man in this room, please stand here. Give them some love, ladies. Give them some love, ladies. Come on, give them some love. You are made of stardust, brothers. And that's not the kind of dust that's on the floor for people to just push around. I love you, I thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this. They, wanna, they don't want us to know. They don't want us to remember that we are made of divine stuff. And it's not just a motivational speech that I'm offering you. I want to help you remember the truth of who you are. Please, we got to remember, because it's not turning out well for us out here. Things are looking a little wonderful. I'll call it wonderful. Because if I know if I call it something else, the power of my words will come true. God will speak that thing that I want to see. I heard John Gray preach something a couple of weeks ago. And the Holy Spirit put it in my heart to share it with you. Not the way he preached it, but the way it landed in my soul. So I want to talk to you about some peas. Peas that I think we need to live through. John Gray preached it in Houston. And I'm going to teach it to you right here. The P of posture, position, perspective, and purpose. Posture, position, perspective, and purpose. First, I have to tell you about Calvin. Calvin is a caterpillar. He was a caterpillar. Yeah. His whole life was spent crawling around on his belly in the dirt. Some of us know what that's about. Calvin thought that's all there was available to him for him. And that's all there was about him. Because he had spent his entire life doing it. And everybody that he knew was doing the same thing. Who know what I'm talking about? Living in a certain condition in a certain way around certain people who do the same thing and they teach you to think that it's normal. And it is normal if you're a caterpillar that you can crawl around on your belly in the dirt. But that, uh, that's not all you are. So one day, Calvin had an idea. He don't know where the idea came from. It just kind of fell upon him in his mind. And he was crawling around and he had this idea. And the idea was, damn, I got to do better. <laughs> just like that. Excuse me, little people. Damn, I got to do better. Because it's crawling around on my belly. This is getting tired. Who know what I'm talking about? Because we all got our form of crawling, yeah? Some of us are crawling around in the dirt of corporate America. Some of us are crawling around in the dirt of unemployment. Some of us are crawling around in the dirt of being broken. Don't leave me out here by myself, New Orleans. So Calvin had this idea, damn. I got to do better. So he started slinking his way in his caterpillar-like behavior. Nothing different, just like he had been doing every other day. And he got to the tree. He got to the foot of the tree. And when he looked up the tree, he said, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Because he was so accustomed to doing things one way until when it came the possibility and the opportunity to do it different, he convinced himself that he couldn't do it. But here's what Calvin had to learn. Your evolution, your change, your growth, your healing, it's not going to be horizontal, it's going to be vertical. Your growth is an uphill climb, baby. So Calvin is at the foot of this tree. Now here's the thing that helped him. He didn't, have to, he didn't get to talk to nobody about his idea. Therefore, nobody got to talk him out of his idea. He just had the idea, damn, things have got to get better. And then he didn't call nobody, he didn't tweet nobody, he didn't Facebook nobody, he didn't take nobody out for drinks. So he was alone in his head without interference. 
and he was able to hold on to the idea. How many of us know that very often when we face an uphill possibility, we call people who talk us into staying right down on our belly in the dirt? You better say it. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to Brooklyn and talk to them. All right now. That's right. So Calvin hadn't been talked out of his idea that things could be better. So he started to climb up the tree. He started his climb up the tree. He started to change his position. He started to change his posture. And when he changed his position and his posture, he was going to change his perspective. He started climbing up the tree. And then when he got to as high as he could go, he looked out and he realized, oh my God, I've got to go out on a limb. Let me tell them over there, because y'all didn't get that. I'm coming over here to tell y'all. Because they didn't get it.
We're living in a time when we have to have an erect and upright posture. Because walking around like we're powerless is letting people think that they can do anything, say anything, give us All anything, right now. anything. What's your posture? How are you standing in your life? How are you standing in your life? In order for us to really ward off the toxicity that's coming, we got to be like Calvin and have a new idea. And we got to be willing to get up off our bellies and stand on our feet. Listen, and I know it ain't easy. I'm like, listen, I, I'm talking about from the welfare to the projects to just getting the rent paid on time. And sometimes not on time, but just in time to miss the sheriff. Hello. I'm not coming to you as no Harvard educated somebody. I'm coming right up with you. But the thing that I had to do was I had to change my posture. How I was standing in my life was I standing waiting for the next shoe to fall, the next disaster to happen, the next fool to pass through and break my heart. What was my posture? How was I gonna deal with myself and every single thing in my life? Some of us just need to change our posture. We need to get to that tree and start climbing up it. We need to take an idea and stop talking about it and be willing to do something about it. Because once we change our posture, we'll change our position. Calvin was on his belly. Calvin was on his belly and he had to be willing to get up. He didn't know how, he didn't know how, but hear me, God took what was in Calvin. He didn't take anything from the ground, anything from the tree, anything from the limb. He took what was in Calvin, pulled it right out his butt and turned him into something new, a beautiful butterfly. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? What you need is in you. What you need is in you. It's in your lesson, it's in the divorce, it's in the breakdown, it's in the tragedy, it's in you. That thing, it, it, it's gonna crack you open. Who would you be without your hard times? We keep praying for the good times, but who would you be had you not learned how to make it on very little, how to get through by yourself? Who would you be had boom boom not left you but to wake up and force you? to figure it out. Who would you be? That's what's coming out your butt. <laughs> that stuff coming out your butt is going to make you something different. It's going to change your position. Where are you? Where are you in your mind? Where are you in your mind? Where are you in your heart? Where are you in your spirit? Where are you in your body? Where are you? I want to show you something. I learned. Just, I was playing with myself. I'm not like that. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> I ain't above that, but that ain't what I was doing this time. <laughs> but I want to show you something I learned, right? Watch this. That don't exist no more. I'm in a new position. That don't exist no more. Yes. I'm in a new position. I ain't there. I'm here. So I get to be something different here. I get to pull it out of my butt, wrap myself, wrap myself in it, and be something different. Or I'm gonna live like this. And so many of us live like this. We're in a dual position. The past and the present, or the present and the future, instead of just being here, right here, right now. In the moment. Step to the left and everything changes. The only thing that'll keep you where you were is your mouth and your mind. The only thing that will keep you where you were was your mouth and your mind. Take what happened over there, pull it out your butt and reinterpret it into something that you need over here. Don't keep playing that sand. Two, change your position. 
and your posture. You're gonna get up out on that limb. Let me tell you about Charlie. Charlie was a snake. Calvin was the caterpillar. Charlie was a snake. Charlie was crawling along, minding his own business. He wasn't bothering nobody. Hadn't done nothing, just slithering along. And all of a sudden, his skin started falling off. Everything that made him who he was started falling off. His whole life began to fall away in an instant. Who know what I'm talking about up in here? Come on, oh, they don't have no problems. Let me talk to you all. Somebody come on. He went into a dark, secret place. Because you know what? As soon as all of his skin came off, Charlie had another experience to deal with. And that was that he was blind. When you are shedding the old in preparation for the new, when you are changing your position and your posture, you're going to be blind. You're not going to be able to see what used to work ain't going to work. And that's what's going to change your perspective. Can you hear me? When you change your posture and your position, you got to be able and willing to go into a deep, dark place in stillness. Put the phone down. Turn the phone off. Turn the TV off. Stop asking questions. Go within because remember, what you need to deal with on the other side of the change is in you and you got to pull it out your butt. You're going to be blind. You're going to be blind when the change really starts to happen. And that's what's going to shift your perspective. And once your perspective shifts, you're going to see the purpose, not only of what you went through, but what you're going through, and who you are, and where you are. You're going to see it. It's going to come little by little by little, but it's going to require that you be willing to lay down your ego and what you think you know, and stop trying to convince people about how smart you are, and how much you know. Just be willing to be blind, skinless, Raw, vulnerable, so that you can learn. Can I tell you something? I think that's where we are now as a community. I think we are being shed of the things that we thought we needed. I think we're being shed of the things that who we thought we were. Because this thing that's going on out here, 
that occupant in the White House. He don't mean you no good, because he don't mean himself no good. But here's the thing, it ain't about him, it's about you, boo. Can I tell you something? When he started with his shenanigations, <laughs> when he started with his shenanigations, I said, oh my God, I have done that. I have said foulness out of my mouth without thinking. Oh my God, I have said that. I have said ugly, mean, nasty, unkind things about people and then denied that I said it. Don't leave me out here by myself. I have done that. I've made up stuff about people and then tried to convince them and you and everybody else that it was true. I've told people things to get them on my side against other people. When I looked at him, I said, oh my God, I have done that. I have done that. And maybe it didn't affect the entire country, but it sure tore my life up. And it wasn't until I became willing to change my position, my posture, and my perspective that I was able to find a new purpose for my mind and my mouth and my body and my life and every gift that I had, everything that God had given me. I had to be willing to look at who I was. He's showing us who we are. He's showing us who we are in our relationships. He's showing us who we are with our money. He's showing us who we are with each other. He's showing us who we are. Don't be tricked into looking at him. It's coming out your body. I ask you for permission. I ask you for permission. They're not gonna tell you this. They're gonna keep playing the news and making you think it's him. I want you to look at you and clean up your stuff. I want you to look at where you're being mean and nasty. I want you to look at it. I want you to look at how you're treating your partner, how you're treating your kids, how you're acting at work. Look at how this wonderful child of God cleverly disguised as an idiot behaves at work. I want you to look at how you behave at work. Can you hear me? I love you. I'm doing it with you. I'm doing it with you. I'm guarding my mouth. I'm changing my mind. I'm altering my position. I'm shifting my perspective. Because when I realized it about myself, I was shocked and horrified. Shocked and horrified. But what started to happen was I started to catch myself when I was doing it. When I was speaking without thinking. When I was being mean for no reason. Can you hear me? Can you, 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 oh, I see the arms of folks. She ain't talking about me. <laughs> they're not gonna tell you this. Let me tell you what they're gonna do. They're gonna keep pointing out to you how horrible it is, how horrible they are, what they're doing, what they're not doing, and have you hypnotized so that you forget to go vote, so that you forget to stand up, so that you forget to do the things that you have to do. Listen. If we clean ourselves up, he ain't gonna be able to exist among us. He's not. But here's the thing. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. We can say that the occupant of the White House has, no, 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 no president, no president. No, no. The occupant of the White House built by black people the occupant of the White House has cast some darkness upon us. But stars only shine in the darkness, baby. Stars only shine in the darkness. We can't complain about the darkness. We gotta start shining. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna get clear about our position, our posture, our perspective, and our purpose.
our position, our posture, our perspective, and our purpose about everything. What is your position on the way our children are being educated? What is your position? What is your position on the condition of elderly in our country? What is your position? What is on your position on the continual repetitive shooting of black bodies in the street by people who are paid to protect them? Really, what is your position? And it can't just be the three weeks while the news is covering it, because they're showing us what they want us to see. Those who control the images and words control the minds of the people. Those who control the images and words control the minds of the people. Those who control the images and words control the minds of the people. Those who control the images and words control the minds of the people. And if they control your mind, they will monitor your position, your posture, and your perspective. I ask you for permission. It's serious. It's serious. We, we, we can't just sit here anymore waiting for somebody to rise up and take us to the promised land. We got to pull it out our butt. Can you hear me? And what's in your butt is what you need. What's in their butt is what they need. What's in my butt is what I need. And then we got to wrap ourselves around in what we got within and be willing to work with one another in our families, in our homes, in our communities, in our churches, wherever you are. But we all got to do something. If we don't, it's not going to turn out well for us. It's not going to turn out well for us. So our position has to change. Every time you hear yourself say why, say cancel, cancel. How? Can you hear me? Not why, how. And let me tell you the definition of how. Honesty, openness, willingness. You gotta be honest with yourself about how you're doing, what you're doing, and why you're doing it. Are you crawling on your belly? Are you avoiding the uphill climb? Are you out on the limb taking pictures for Instagram? Yeah. Or are you out there trying to heal? How? Honesty, openness, be open to new things. You know why? The old way isn't working. Can you hear me? The old way isn't working. They taught me today what a millennial was. I didn't know what it was. I just said, oh, the millennials, the millennials, because everybody else was saying millennials. I didn't even know what the hell a millennial was. And then I found out it's people born after 82 up until they're like 35. And I said, well, I don't want to separate them. I don't want to separate the millennials. But we need their ideas because our old ways ain't working. We need their ideas and we need their energy and we need their perspective. And they're in a different position than we are. They have a different posture than we do. You know, the millennials, they're willing to take some risks that some of our old butts ain't willing to take. Okay. So we got to weave them in openness, let's be open to new ways, let's be open to new voices. We got a 28-year-old Boricua, a Puerto Rican in New York City. That's right. Ready to tear it up. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. A democratic socialist. That's okay. right. I have no clue what that is. Yeah. <laughs> but then I didn't know what a millennial was. I just wasn't against it. Honesty, openness, listen. Eliminate against this. You don't have to like it. You don't have to sleep with it. Just don't be against it. Because the againstness disturbs your energy. If it's over there, step to the right. Let it exist. But no againstness. Be ye not oppositional. In your home, be ye not oppositional. At work. Be ye not oppositional. Just get clear about your position, your perspective, your posture, and move on up your tree to where you're going. Don't ask why, ask how. And don't ask when, ask who. You know what the, the, the definition of who is? Willingness, honesty, and openness. Okay. Your who is your how, baby. Okay. Your who is your how. <laughs> so, 
Time is growing near for us to do a new thing. <laughs>